Today we're gonna try arguably the most, uh, most popular mead in uh, probably the entire world. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today I have in front of me a, I say special mead, it's a very, very common mead. If you have uh, been in the world of mead for any time, you might have tried this before. If not, it's definitely worth a try. This is Chaucer's mead. And um, I say it's probably the most common or most popular because pretty much any liquor store you go to that has mead probably has a bottle of this. And um, it's just, it, I think it's because of the distribution of mead. Uh, Chaucer's, the, the company, you know, they just generally have a, probably a good connection to all the places so they get their meat out there. Now, um, I will go, go ahead and give you a spoiler. I have tried this meat before, and um, so this is not a new tasting for me necessarily. I am gonna add some new varieties because there are some things about it, but I do wanna give you my opinion on Chaucer's. And uh, again, this is my opinion, so please don't say it's fact. Please don't assume that I am, I'm, you know, saying that this is the end all be all of, of this mead. So a couple of things about it, first of all, uh, on this, you can drink it in a couple different ways. Like every mead, you can drink it cold, you can drink it room temp, you can also drink it um, hot. And there are different options for this Chaucer's mead for each one. Um, it is a very interesting mead in that it comes with a little spice pack. It has this uh, informational packet, I should say. It's got a couple things in it. It tells about Chaucer's when they started, um, in California, blah, blah, blah. Some pairing suggestions served with grilled, served with grilled meats and vegetables, dried fruits and cheeses, uh, stuff like that. It's got this, the accolades, um, for each one. And then it has the, uh, recipe for a braggot. Now the, that's why I have this beer here is we're going to make ourselves a braggot today, uh, with part of this in, in, test it too. So there's there's one option. We can make a braggot, take a beer and, and a mead, mix them together. That's a braggot. They also, within this informational packet, send you some spices. Now this is where the hot cold side of things comes into play. A lot of times we drink a mead, either room temp or cold. In this case, you can use these spice packs to uh, you know, add some extra flavor. For example, you can do a cold spice mead. And so what you do with this is it says, place one to two spice bags in a pitcher of chilled mead for half an hour or longer, depending on blah, blah, blah. Remove spice bags, enjoy. So that's the spices are cinnamon, orange peel, cloves, and natural flavor, which uh, you're basically making a Joe's ancient orange mead-ish um, kind of thing. Or you can do the hot spiced mead, which is basically like making a tea, a uh, boil to uh, boil some mead. Yeah, and then just put them in. It's pretty, pretty simple. I'm not doing those options today. Um, mainly, I mean, I know I could, but I'm not going to. So anyways, let's, uh, let's get just a raw tasting of it before we go too crazy with adding the beer mixture. Um, like I said, this is not a new mead tasting for me. So I apologize that this is not the first time I've ever tasted this. Uh, I do have a general idea of what it tastes like, but it has been probably six months since I've tried it. So, um, well, we're gonna try it. It is very clear. They've done a great job of uh, clarifying it. Of course, I think they have their own process. They're a big time mead company, so I would not doubt that their, their process is streamlined. Um, looks pretty good. Not carbonated, I will add. Um, and, and yeah, let's go ahead and smell. So uh, they've got a good honey character. I will say that, great honey character. Um, it is basically just a straight up traditional mead. So this is nothing, no extra flavors added. I think that's why that spice pack would help ultimately. Yeah, I get a good um, good honey flavor. Honey smell, I should say. Uh, I don't know what percent it is. It's a 10 and a half percent mead. So I do get a little bit of that heat on it. I don't think it's aged for very long. You know, I don't, there's no aging. There's no time when it was aged. Anyways, let's test it. It's very, very sweet. It tastes like, um, ooh, man, that's a lot of honey. So uh, they definitely got it up there for the 10 and a half percent, got the honey, uh, you know, all the 
<laughs> the stuff for the yeast to ferment, honey in this case, up to 10.5%. Stabilized sulfided, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure they did. Yep, contain sulfites, and then back sweetened. They back sweetened a ton on this one. Yeah, it's very, very sweet. Um, not necessarily like a sack mead. Uh, I don't think that it's like too, I mean, it's too sweet for me, in my opinion. I don't think it's too sweet for a sack mead. And a sack mead, if you don't know, is like a really sweet mead. The honey character really pops out because they added more honey on top of what they did. Uh, it's really not a bad traditional mead. If it were more dry, I, I think I'd really like it. But the problem is it's just so in your face sweet. And I think that's part of why people really like it is the sweetness. The sweetness also in some form or fashion drowns out the, uh, the alcohol volume. So, you know, when you think you make a mixed drink, a Dr. Pepper and a Jack, uh, if you make it heavy Dr. Pepper, you're still getting that alcohol content, but you're not tasting as much. I think that's kind of what happens here, why it's really popular, is because you're, you can drink it easier, so to speak, without having the burn. If you are not a person like me who likes whiskey with the burn, or maybe even mead, who you like the heat of that alcohol, um, then they, most people like sweetness in that case. The big motto that I think wineries sometimes go by and lots of meaderies is sweetness sells. And I've noticed that in a lot of commercial meads. Yeah, it's really, truly it's not bad. It is just so sweet that I couldn't, I could not drink a lot of it and feel comfortable. Now, you know, maybe there are perks to that. You don't need to be drinking, go too crazy and drink the whole bottle by yourself. But I do want, if I, I don't think I could do a whole glass is what I'm saying. Like if I filled this bad boy up, it'd be hard for me to do that just because it's so in my face. Um, great traditional flavor though. I think that if it's uh, drier, that'd be good. Now let's investigate the, um, the Braggot side of things. The Braggot recipe it has on here, and I'm gonna follow it to a T, uh, is a one quarter portion of Chaucer's Mead, which is what we have here, and then three quarter portion of India Pale Ale style beer. Now it just so happens that I just bought some Lagunitas today, um, and I'm not gonna need to, yeah, not, I almost said that wrong. And so we're gonna use it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna sacrifice this right here. Let's say that's my quarter portion. Open up our beer. Now Braggot is, what we said, mixture of beer and mead. And uh, it is really interesting. You can do Braggots in lots of different ways. I think that's about it right there. Um, you, can do, you can make a Braggot by making a mead first and then adding a beer on top of it, similar to what we did here. You can also make a, a beer and then add lots of honey. And I think that in order for a um, braggot to exist, and you know, actually this is certain, it has to be 51% honey coming from you know, your, your main fermentable sugar. So that's the most important thing. Now, this is technically a braggot, but I don't know if the uh, ratio of sugars Maybe so, with, with how sweet this is, uh, the sugars are 51 to 49 or whatever. So I've always made my braggots by making a beer, adding honey. I have never made a braggot the other way around, making uh, a mead and then adding a beer later. I'll have to try that at some point. I think I got my ratios correct. It's hard to know exactly. But let's go ahead and try this now, the mixture. That's not bad. Um, I mean, I already like the Lagunitas. It's, it's good. Um, I think that it, this just adds some sweetness to it. I'm, I'm not a huge IPA guy, so Lagunitas are good. Uh, there's a Coop F5 beer that I really like, but I don't know, generally I don't like uh, really hoppy things, which is interesting. So I think this tampers or tempers down some of that sweetness or some of that hoppiness. Yeah, the mixture of those is great. Um, you know, I, I think mainly because it's mostly beer, the mead side of things adds to it. It's very, very unique that Chaucer's has this information. And one reason, or one thing that Chaucer's does well is they give you lots of options for trying mead. This is a great, is, it's a decent intro starter mead for people. The problem with it is when we investigate other meads, 
commercial meads, lots of times they're not this sweet. So if you buy this and you buy a bunch of bottles and you drink it and you go, this is mead, uh, and then you go off and buy something else that is not sweet and you try it, you go, well, that's, wait, this is not mead when you compare it to other things. And it's fine to like sweetness. Please don't assume that I'm saying liking sweetness is bad. It is totally fine to like a sweet drink. It's not my cup of tea necessarily. I don't really like it that much um, just because it's, it's too, too heavy, too in my face. So I wouldn't necessarily prefer to drink a lot of it. Is it a good starting point for people? Yeah, if you wanna get someone into mead and you know they like sweet things, buy them a bottle of Chaucer's. It's pretty cheap. Um, I wanna say this thing is like 12 bucks, 13 bucks maybe for this whole bottle, which is arguably um, cheaper than in most meads. So it's not bad. It's not the best one in the world. I would not, com I would not say it's the best commercial mead. Is it the most popular? Possibly, it, it's up there. Um, but I would love to know your opinions. I think that obviously getting my opinion is, is my opinion and uh, you're, you might have a different opinion. You might love Chaucer's and that's great. I have not investigated every single avenue of, Cha of Chaucer's, I should say. We did the whole Braggot thing. We've done the, um, we haven't done the spice side of things. So that would be the next thing for, to do, which I, again, I'm not gonna do that today. I just wanted to, to try it in this form or fashion. I think the spices could help take some, um, some heaviness off of that sweetness. But again, I'm not gonna try that. I would love to know what you think about this mead. I'd also love to know what meads you want me to try. My biggest issue is that here in Oklahoma, we have a terrible uh, importing system for mead. And I mean, I can get three things. I can get Chaucer's, which they have two different flavors of Chaucer's. And the other one's a raspberry, you think? Something like that. Anyways, uh, two ch different flavors of Chaucer's. Then Redstone is good. I like Redstone a lot. We get a couple different ones of them. And then um, there's one called Moonlight Meadery that we get a few bottles of. So if you want me to try something, uh, I, I'll take suggestions, of course, and I'll have to probably go and find it somehow. If you want to send me a bottle of something, like a commercial mead to try, I will absolutely do that. Let me know. Um, and of course, if it's, if you send me something and uh, I'll, I'll try and pay and help you, you know, send it to me and do those things because I want to be able to try other meads. Um, when I went to Minneapolis, I had to stock up and I just bought a million of them and then got them back to my, my place and, and uh, one, one piece. So. I'd love to do that again. I'm out of those meads, so I'm kind of looking for other ones to try. But I uh, appreciate you know, any support you guys give, whether it be liking or commenting, um, which those things help me out big time. And then of course subscribing, because that lets me know, hey, we wanna uh, continue to grow. I believe by the time this is posted, we will have passed 8,000 subscribers, and I would love to get 10,000. If we got to there by July, that'd be incredible. Um, now, I don't know if that's gonna happen or not. I think it's just, uh, I don't know. But if you wanna help with that, make sure you tell your friends about mead making it and man-made mead. That would really help me out a lot and I would appreciate it greatly. You can also check out the other links down below. I've got a Patreon where you can support me. Um, you get access to early content and all that thing stuff. You get, or there's a, a Facebook, excuse me, a Facebook page where we talk about mead making. Then, so there's a subgroup of that Facebook page that's man-made mead makers. It's a group and you actually have to uh, join that, answer some questions, and then I approve it um, if you answer the questions and do those things. Uh, and there we talk about mead making even more. There's also uh, other things like a Society6 for buying merchandise. Um, there's my website if you want to know or if you want to buy anything. Um, through Amazon for brewing. I highly suggest and, and hope that you'll go over to my website and click on the Amazon links. I have some uh, affiliate codes to, to certain things and if you buy things that cost you no more money, uh, it just sends a couple pennies my way basically and so that helps the channel too. But again, most important thing, liking, subscribing and um, sharing your own meat experiences and hopefully uh, if you want my sharing some of mine, I'd appreciate that. But. Let me know what you think about all of this. Of course, any other meads. Um, tell me what you want to see in the future for other mead reviews, and uh, I will gladly try and do them. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in another video very soon. So with that, cheers.